Hey guys, Randy Potato here with a new tutorial series for Darkest Dungeon 2. Today we are going to show and explain each of my moves more in depth than my normal runs to kind of teach you how to think about this game so you can start to win more. Uh, today we're starting on a fresh profile. You can see I have no unlocks, skills, or heroes, or items gonna start from a fresh profile obviously doing act one and we are going to prioritize uh, getting as many candles as possible but also trying to reach the confession boss because ultimately reaching the confession boss is how you get the maximum amount of candles to continue unlocking items and lead you to actually beating the game so Obviously, we don't have a lot of decisions to make about our team. <coughs> Basically, just where we want to place our characters is the only decision we make. So for that, we look at Quirks. Uh, we've got a Steady Man at Arms. He's going to be our rank one. Pride. We have a Blundering Fool uh, Highwayman. This means he will do uh, take damage when moving, which is unfortunate because Duelist Advance is actually one of his better skills. And until we get rid of this quirk, we can't really use it. So we're going to put him in rank two. A fugitive seeking we have a Precision Striker Grave Robber. This means her pick to the face will be doing more um, crit, higher crit rate. So we're going to put her in rank three. Slips unseen. And then our Plague Doctor will fit in rank four. Mind. This is basically the only decision you have when you're running on a fresh profile is where to put the grave robber and the uh, plague doctor because the plague doctor has incision which is a quite strong bleed move that's available for only from three whereas Audrey her strong melee attack is only available from the front three positions as well and the main problem with this is both of these characters do blight damage if you're in the back row both of these players both of these heroes are Blight mains, basically. And two of the regions, the Sluice and the Fodor, or Fetter, I guess, uh, are resistant against Blight. So one of these heroes, whichever one is in rank four, will be far less useful for us. But since we have Precision Striker, we'll put our Grave Robber in three for now. But we might change. This was a beautiful place once. Alright, so you can get items hitting this even in the valley, so it's pretty important to make sure you hit all your uh, all your piles here. We haven't gotten anything yet. And we're about to reach our first node, which is the insistence encounter. Now, right now, on a fresh profile, we have zero food. So I'd probably go for Trinket Unlock. It doesn't really matter which one I pick, which Trinket. I just know I want a Trinket more than supplies. Uh, this is okay. And debuff resist. I think I put this on the man arm or the Highwayman because remember, he has Blundering Fool which gives him a chance of being Vuln at combat start. Turn off the tutorials. This will give him higher debuff resist. There isn't a lot of stun, so I don't care about stun resist, really. Stun, I mean, the Act 1 boss uh, has stun, so it matters a little. But obviously that's the end game. And you're not really expected to get to the end boss on your first run. Alright, the Hoarder, our first uh, real chance to make a decision. And we have some interesting decisions here. We have 48 Relics. That's the base you start out with. Now we have three playing cards. And of course, playing cards boost your affinity. Playing cards also have a hidden side effect. 
a bit of uh, they can either give you Tactical Thinker, which is an incredible quirk, or they can give you Braggart, which is a horrible quirk because it lowers your... Uh, it gives you a chance to get negative relationships even if you have positive affinity, and it lowers your chance of positive relationships. So I bought all three of these playing cards because affinity is obviously really important early on. You got to build those relationships and you can start getting um, the blessed skills, which will further scale you so you can take on uh, this game with your base heroes, which is quite difficult. Um, now, nothing else really jumps out at me. Nothing that I want to spend money on, because remember, we have Blundering Fool, and we definitely want to remove this out of hospital, which will cost us 16 relics. So we're just going to go ahead and save the rest of our money. Now we take a scenic route to our first combat. Where we will face the gaunt enemy pool, which is a very common enemy pool in road combats. And you also occasionally face them uh, as part of the mash, the enemy mash in resistance encounters. The bulwark of your denial so knowing how to way. counter the Gaunts is very important because like I said, these are every road fight. Now the first thing you do when entering a combat is identify the most dangerous creature. Now if you hit alt while hovering a hero or an enemy, we learn upon it will show inspection. this screen. Now, you will only know their skills once they have used a skill. So obviously we're on a fresh profile, so we can't really find anything out. But for those of you not on a fresh profile, make sure to use Alt if you don't already Let us take a know all the enemy skills by heart. As repulsive as it is. Now, these skeletons, the Lost Soul, they cause disease and stress with their chop attack if they're in the front ranks. If they're in the back ranks, uh, they only use Filthy Morsel, which is a Blight attack. Now the Widow can apply Stress and Horror. So technically she does more Stress overall. And then next thing you want to look at, of course, is the Turn Order. You only get a partial Turn Order in Darkest Dungeon. And we see they're going to go. So we know we get three free actions before anyone moves. So the Widow is probably the target. Now we need to think about what we can do against the Widow. We can Pistol Shot, that's three to six. Now your Grave Robber cannot pick to the face in the back row, so she can only Throne Dagger or Poison Dart. So actually, and the Plague Doctor has no back rank attacks. We only have Blinding Gas, which is a non-damaging move. So actually, the Widow is not the choice. We go after the Lost Soul, which means we use Wicked Slice, our highest damage attack. Like I said, we have Blundering Fool, so we do not use Duelist Advance. All right, so the Blight Resist is relatively high on the Lost Souls. Now, they have 5 HP, so we would have to blight the target. So there's a 66% chance we blight the target and are able to kill. Meanwhile, the Grave Robber, who will also act, does 4 to 7 damage. So it's roughly the same percentage either way, except she has a higher crit chance. So I'm actually going to leave it to the Grave Robber to kill. Now we could guarantee the kill by attacking both with Plague Doctor and Grave Robber. And that actually might be the right strategy. Yeah, I think we go here and then we can decide if we don't actually kill here, then we can decide to kill here. Because then if we can get a Blight here and kill this round, then a crit from the Grave Robber a crit is 1.5%. Or 
or uh, 1.5 times your top end damage. So a crit should be 11, which would be enough to kill here. So Noxious Blast here is the correct play. Roll on the 60%. And we got the Blight. So the Lost Soul is dead. As you can tell, they don't have a debuff resist. There's no or death blow resist, which means they will die once they hit zero. This means we can take our 17% chance to crit. And unfortunately, it did not work. Oh, and she also has a stun attack. Which, that's what generally makes her more dangerous, but we did not have a good way to kill her this round. So as you can see, her, show, her skill showed up. Alright, so to kill here, since we apply a two-point... To kill here, we not only have to do the dot, but we have to high roll our three damage. But since we have no way of doing direct damage to the back row, we still use Noxious Blast here. We're not going to kill in one hit, unfortunately. Now, we can Rampart here. This will automatically kill. And hopefully, this will move uh, the Lost Soul back. Which means then we can use our more powerful Pick to the Face and Wicked Slice to kill the Widow before her action. So we use Rampart. The corpse was moved. Obstacle in our path. Now we use Pick to the Face and Wicked Slice, our two highest damage attacks. And our crit was 11. A trivial worryment. And we got our two mastery and four extra relics. You always receive two mastery from this fight. And you, you occasionally receive extra. So much worse in store. And now we're heading to our first inn. And we only accumulated one stress, which will be healed by the inn. So all in all, a successful first fight. Of course, that's the tutorial fight, so not impressive. But it's important. It's important not to take unnecessary stress there in fights like that. It's very important. And that's the thing where I see a lot of players gathers. misplay. Is they, uh, they misplay fights like that. Gaining unnecessary stress, and then the hard fights kill them because they're in not good shape for the fights. The now, the first thing you do is you select a route. Road. Choose your path and ride out unbowed. Now, this is a very interesting decision. Very interesting. Generally, I am an advocate of always taking the sluice because it's free loot. It's free, uh, free loot, free mastery. And then you get another chance at an inn to buy more inn items. But, very interestingly, this reward, the griddle, is your best chance at getting real food. The only food available right now is slime mold. But flapjacks give us, or the griddle gives us flapjacks, which is a plus 20% HP uh, item. You can use it on all your heroes. So, I think we actually choose this, and it's a very easy, it's a very easy goal. Avoid the field hospital, and we also get less flame drain as in kind of extra. So, I'm a huge advocate of always going sluice if it's available. But like I said, you have to weigh the rewards, and this is. This might be the best reward you can get from this screen. Being able to get max HP is so huge early on in survivability for your heroes because at base HP, your heroes are very fragile. And the Tangle is also a pretty easy region. So I think we choose the Tangle, we say goodbye to the Sluice. The front lines of a war. That was we go to the Provisioner. A Glimmer of Hope is great. What you, can. you do not want to be ambushed. 
So I'm a big advocate of a glimmer of hope whenever you can get it. Bandages are also an interesting decision. And it's notable that we are not going to the hospital, of course. Because we want the griddle. So we actually want... Might want to pick up bandages. This might be a good way to survive. The Tangle has a lot of bleed, a lot of heavy damage. I think we pick up both. And before I go any further, I want to check hero goals. Visit the Hoarder. This is one of the easiest ways you can accumulate candles. Just need to visit one more Hoarder for you. Use two Glimmer of Hopes, so these items. Slay two Pillagers, very likely. So these are all very likely rewards. Nothing we have to think too hard about. Alright. One of you can have a Glimmer of Hope. Maybe we go the fast character with the uh, bleed. And it doesn't really matter who has a Glimmer of Hope. Well, he wants to use a Glimmer of Hope, so obviously it goes on the Highwayman. Alright, let's use our playing cards. That was about 50-50, so not good. Only one negative there. That's much better. That's, I think, 83%. Alright, that was incredible RNG. That was extremely, extremely unlikely RNG. We got Tactical Thinker. So, like I said, playing cards, you have a decent chance at getting a trinket, especially if you use a lot of them. Or a a quirk. And of course you can also get a very bad negative quirk. So now let's check our relationships. We have all neutral relationships. That means all these relationships and we have no relationship modifiers in our quirks. So it's just a 5% chance either way. So it's all up to RNG now. Now for mastery. The means of mastery. Especially on the current patch, the relationship update. Which, by the way, I think I neglected to mention, this is on the experimental branch. So if you want to play along, you need to be on the experimental branch. Currently. I'm a huge advocate of upgrading bolster. You want a skill, a stress heal skill, that can get you from 5 stress, which is the threshold, down to 3 stress. Because 4 stress is the threshold at which you can have negative banter on the road. If you're below four stress, I don't believe you can have negative banter unless you have a negative quirk related to road banter. So this is the best way to uh, gain affinity passively is just through road, uh, just traveling along the road. And you do that by maintaining your stress. So bolster is a must have upgrade. Now for our second skill, I want to go for some sort of damage. Normally, I would go for Duelist Advance, but because we have Blundering Fool, uh, moving is not good. Now, we're going to the Tangle. So, Pick to the Face is good because it ignores block, and the Tangle generates a lot of block. Uh, this only upgrades your top end, of course, but with our higher crit rate. Since the crit rate, it only takes into account the top end of your damage. So our crit would be 15 instead of 11. Now that's a really good upgrade. So we can either go with that. We can go with take aim. Which will give us a chance at two crit tokens. This further aids stress relief because critting enemies uh, gives you more tokens. Or gives you more stress heal. We can do poison darts which doubles our poison damage, but I probably won't do this because Pick to the Face is better on this particular Grave Robber because of Precision Striker. Or we can go for Noxious Blast, which also increases our Blight by two. This is a very, very strong Blight. And we also have Crush, which is a pretty strong upgrade, but I don't really like upgrading two things on the Man at Arms at once. So I'm torn between Take Aim Pick to the face and Noxus Blast. This is a little bit slow, taking one turn to buff. 
But getting those guaranteed crits, getting the speed token... Of course, the speed token doesn't interact well with the drummer in the tangle. We could also go for Wicked Slice. That's like an okay upgrade. Same with Pistol Shot. Although we don't really combo, so Pistol Shot upgrade isn't amazing. Um, I think we go for Take Aim. Getting two crit tokens, that's further stress relief. All right, and that's all the decision we have to make. We have 10 relics. Everything is equipped. Let's go ahead and get started with our run. One relationship. 5% chance is positive, or it's 50-50 whether it's positive or negative. We got lucky. Aspiration Hopeful will always cause hope. stress... Um, Stress heal. A one point stress heal. So when we use crush, which is our base attack, Paracelsus will heal one stress. Noxious blast, which is another one of our base attacks, will also heal one stress on Barristan. So, a very good result. Very good RNG. Alright, so our priorities. Obviously, our first priority is avoiding the uh, hospital so we can achieve our region goal. Our number two priority is Hero Shrines to unlock more skills. Rewards only. Resignation. And our number three priority is to accumulate loot. All right, so let's look at the map. Our first decision node is here. We're not doing a lair. We don't have what it takes to beat this boss right now. We have an Oasis. Oasis is probably the strongest location. One of the strongest locations you can get. Because this gives you spring water. Or at least a chance at spring water. Which is a uh, heal and a stress heal. So very powerful. And that leads us directly into a fight with a candle. Now there's a lot of road fights. Which is a little bit scary. But I like the candle. I like the loot over the question mark. That leads us into a system encounter, which is fine. And now we have between hospital and hoarder, and of course, because of our region goal, avoid the field hospital. All we have to do is go to the hoarder here, and we get a free griddle, assuming we complete the region, of course. Then into a cultist fight. Cultist fights are very, very difficult, of course, especially with this early team. But this is your best chance at getting a great trinket. You don't have a lot of trinket unlocks, so the way to get strong trinkets is either defeating a boss and getting his boss trinkets, or defeating the cultists and receiving a cultist trinket. Now, on a fresh profile without any unlocks, the cultists drop uh, one of two, can drop one of two uh, cultist trinkets. One of them misstep, which will give you plus 75% HP in exchange for 50% less damage. Which is a great add for Paracelsus, because Paracelsus doesn't do direct damage. And it has Wounding Words, which does 50% damage in exchange for less health. Which is great on your... Uh, great on your Highwaymen to do more damage, of course. Do enough damage to scale against bosses. And then, of course, we'll probably take the... F probably take the... Actually take the Unknown... So that's the thing we have to weigh between fight and unknown. Is unknowns can be hero shrines. And we really want an early hero shrine. So we can point blank. Or dead of night. But I... Well, since we are doing a cultist fight already, guaranteed... And Hero Shrines also give us a uh, point, give us mastery. So I think we actually take the unknown. We go Oasis into unknown. All right, first up is the Creature Den. This is a very difficult fight with incredible rewards. Thankfully, we do have a Plague Doctor who can heal dots. 
the bandages may or may not be useful here. Now comes the affinity screen. So only one person wants to run. That means we will definitely fight just for affinity and, of course, loot. Everyone's at neutral, basically. So we don't have to micromanage relationships here. We can just take the best option. And that is, of course, the free vulnerability token. Now, the creature den, of course, has two waves of enemies. Quite difficult, very difficult, especially to hit. Now, this is a very good... We can get a good crit chance here. 21% chance to crit. And our crit will do... What, 17? So a crit kills. We did not get the crit. Web is pretty bad to start off. Alright, I think we go... Hmm. So we can hit here, but we don't really do anything unless we crit. But doubling up can kill. And we're gonna get two we're gonna get Barristan as well in on the action. Alright, so all we have to do is any amount of damage. And we kill. Getting one kill early on is great. On to the next. Of course now we have three very difficult enemies to deal with. All right, both of these have very high blight resist. This could be a time to ounce of prevention. We don't really do damage here. So ounce of prevention is actually pretty good. Empowered, emboldened. Now I can't waste time defending. You see I can boost affinity here with defender, but against a fight this tough, I don't believe we have time. So I'm going to go ahead and crush, which is our best damage. We'll go ahead and crush the Weber. It's a 50% 50, 50 chance we hit with this dodge. We didn't hit. Another chance to hit here. Again, the Weber is our top target because they blight, they stun. This is a high crit rate enemy. But they only bleed, and we can handle bleed because we have bandages. And we missed again, unluckily. Now we're blinded here, and we have up upgraded take aim. So this is a perfect take aim moment. This will also give us dodge. That's very unlucky. Very, very unlucky. Very unlucky targeting so far, and we are blinded again. So this is about as bad as the start can go for your run. We're going to have to heal. We might actually die here. It's actually very bad, especially with the blind. So it's only a 50% chance to hit. All right, again, we're going to go for this kill here. 21% chance we kill. And we didn't. So very high chance we die here now if he targets us. Which luckily they didn't. The first target at least. Now, we have two options. We can defend our Dismas. But we're going to heal him anyways. So he'll end up being, what, 20% heal? He'll be like mid HP. The best option here is to eliminate a piece from the board. Um, we're not guaranteed to kill there, but this is a lower chance to kill. So I'm going to rely on my speed here. We're going to try and kill with Crush. This is a little riskier strat than dazing him and killing next turn. But it's much higher reward if we can get just a kill right now and not have to worry about it. It was like a 50-50. There we kill. And we obviously heal this. We also get free affinity. 
And targeting our tank is completely fine. All right, now we want to target the spitter because they do not have dodge, so it will be easier to kill them. They also are late in the turn order. So we have a, a guaranteed crit from Dismas, and he can reach with pistol shot. A crit will do nine damage. Uh, the spitter has high blight, so this poison dart doesn't really do much. We're basically hoping for a high roll or a crit from this thrown dagger. And we got the crit. Pretty lucky there. And this is a guaranteed kill. So now we have three oh, enemies down. Of this course, this is only the first weird. round, so we're still in pretty bad shape. Now we just start going after the Nasher, deal with their dodge tokens. I'm going to go ahead and keep crushing. We just want to take away all as much dodge as possible. And we got a very lucky turn order considering, well, they're only four speed. So we just go all out attacking the Nasher this turn. Alright, a crit here will kill. Alright, he's gonna die on his own. So there's no point in attacking him. This means we get another free turn to buff ourselves for the next round. All right, so we have the Nash, the Devourer, with block tokens, and we have the Nashers. This is an interesting conundrum here, because we don't do a lot of damage to block plus, but the Devourer is probably the toughest enemy, and the Devourer also eats corpses. So we might go all out on the Devourer right here. Alternatively, we could go here. The problem is this is not a guaranteed kill, even if we crit, even if we do hit. So now we have a decision to make. Do we continue and try and kill this Nasher this round? And I think the answer is yes. We go all out to kill this one Nasher. That gives us an action economy advantage for the next round. Now this will leave a corpse, unfortunately, which allows him to eat, which will give him crit. But I think the action economy advantage is worth it. And we have no way of removing that corpse. Now because he's going to do this, this could be a good time for flashing daggers. Because he's going to eat, he's going to gain block tokens, he's going to... Gain crit. So actually, thrown dagger is just better. We thrown dagger and then follow it up with pistol shot here. Actually, we go back here because they we might be able to kill before their turn if we double hit. Because they're going next, which means they'll gain another dodge token anyways. Because all their attacks gain dodge tokens. Their Observe rabid the rush. Carefully. And you will discover its weaknesses. So if we get a hit here with Thrown Dagger, along with a pistol shot hit, we'll actually kill the Rabbit Nasher before it acts, giving us a very strong action economy advantage. All right, we missed, but that's fine. And of course, they have ate the corpse. That's more block, more crit. Very scary, very scary stuff. We still go for the pistol shot here. That'll set us up to kill next round. Stupendous. Actually, it'll set us up to kill with Crush. So here we have a couple choices. We can start stripping the Nasher's dodge tokens. Or we can blind the back row Nasher. 
So this is actually an interesting choice. We can either strip a token here, or we can blinding gas the back row. A good, a very high, a 90% chance of applying our blind token. So we take less damage and a 25% chance of getting a combo token. And if we get a combo token, then we can use Crush to heal Barristan. So Blinding Gas is actually the, the correct play here. And we got both the blind and the combo. Very lucky. Now, he did gain a dodge, of course. So we're 50-50 to hit here and get a nice four-point heal. We got lucky with the heal. And now we have a very strong action economy advantage. Um, we could go all out and rush. I actually think I like all out rushing instead of taking aim and buffing ourselves. Because if we can get at least two hits here, we will kill this rabid Nasher before it acts. Which will obviously, is obviously great for action economy advantage. Eliminating targets whenever you can is just huge in getting the action economy advantage. Spreading damage or, you know, stalling in most scenarios is not good. So I'm just going to go aggressive and attack. Now, we're, it's only 50-50, of course, to hit. So I'm not upset if we miss. And we're actually not going to kill here unless we crit. But we're still going to push the damage. Now he will die next round, guaranteed. We don't have to do anything. Alright, that was very scary. So with this, I'm going to defend. That'll give me block tokens. And cr we, we could crush and get rid of one of his tokens, but he's likely to eat a corpse anyways. We're going to have to get ready for the long fight, the long game. Now, nobody wants to be healed. Nobody wants to be defended. But I still take the defender. I just want the block tokens. Now, we could bandage up right here. And bandaging up would allow us to gain affinity. So I think that's better than using... If we feel like we're in danger, we can still heal with Paracelsus. Uh, Battlefield Medicine. But I think I take the affinity boost here and remove this dot. All right, now we go for poison darts. We could start attacking this corpse, but this corpse is about to die. So I don't feel like getting rid of the corpse really does anything here. If we go after the poison dart. It's not a high chance of blight, but we're not doing damage anyways. So it's at least a chance of doing damage. Now we could, we could do this to gain affinity, or we could start removing block plus tokens. I think this fight is pretty well in hand right now. So I actually, I'm an advocate of gaining affinity when you can. So I'm actually going to gain affinity here. Further boost our relationship. And I'll take aim to give myself a dodge token and crit tokens. Since, like I said, we're not really doing anything here. And now I want to blind him because he's about to eat one of these tokens, one of these corpses, and gain a crit token. So I want to prepare for that. And he did not eat a, not eat a corpse. Very interesting. So in this case... One corpse disappeared, and he has not eaten the corpse yet. In this case, we take our crit token, and we eliminate a corpse. And now he has no chance to eat. The fight is settled. Now all we have to do is do the damage. And of course, Pick to the Face is amazing here, because it goes through his block, it ignores his block. Now... Do we want to... S doing Blight damage doesn't really do anything. It's basically just eliminating a block token. But I also don't like healing before I know which character is better to heal since we have a use limit. 
So I think we just go with Noxus Blast and we'll look to heal later in the fight. Once it's more in hand. Once we know what happens is happening. No affinity boosting. I pretty much always check defender. As long as we have the fight in hand. We're going to do crush because it does more damage. And this crit will actually kill here. Or put on death's door. So I'm going to take this opportunity to heal. This guarantees to put him on death's door, but obviously does not kill them because you can, as you can see, they have death's door. But putting them on death's door does weaken them. Now we could heal here, but there's really no point because we're very likely to kill here, and the bleed will disappear when the fight is over. Unlike Darkest Dungeon One. So I'm very happy just poison darting here. Getting the kill. 11 round fight. No stress. Thanks to our positive relationships and our crits. Uh, stress heal, that's okay. Medicinal herbs are good. Clotting poultice is alright. But the mastery is the big thing. Guaranteed mastery. Put the medicinal herbs on you. All right, that is our first node. Now we head to the Oasis. Consider all variables, but do it quickly. I rarely consider the hero's choices because you only gain or lose stress. Tranquility awaits. Whereas getting the proper choice, as far as uh, buffing your team, is much better than just the stress relief from a route encounter choice. All right, very unlucky for some reason. None of them have quirks that should make them leave here. And we have no option of getting spring water. So unfortunate here. So, these three characters all want to leave. Audrey's the only one odd one out. She will lose with one of these heroes. Now, I want to... Going into the negatives is much worse than being in the friendly zone. Going further into the negative or staying in neutral. Because negative relationships are much worse than positive relationships are good. Because it locks your skill in, which doesn't matter early on when you only have the five skills. But also the debuffs are much worse than the minor benef benefits you get from the relationship buffs. So what I want to do is I want to choose Barristan. We will lose one or two relationship points. They will still be friendly, which blocks them from having a negative relationship at all and preserves these relationships in their neutral form so we can maybe buff them later. And of course, Barristan has Defender, so it's much easier for him to boost relationships later anyways. If we need to buff with Grave Robber again. All right, very disappointing node. So in this case, we don't have to worry about loathing because we did this fight. Uh, we already have one mastery from our congealed slime. So I think we go question mark and pray for a hero shrine so we can unlock a skill. And it turns out it didn't matter. As you can see, we're getting positive affinity. Enriching themselves as the world collapses. All right, this is a very, very difficult fight. Also, this is a road battle, so we have to defeat it in five turns if we want the loot. The loot is minimal. So, but I always try to beat every fight. That's just what I like to do. So the most dangerous enemy right now 
is this pillager crack shot only in rank four in rank four the pillager crack shot either uses shell shock which is an aoe stress attack on the back line or front mortar which is a big nuke which can also stun the front rank and move them back so we're going to take this opportunity we're going to use audrey and uh dismiss in it in conjunction in tandem to kill the crack shot it's highly unlikely we kill this turn we check for defend affinity farming um probably not we kind of want to kill this hatchetman so i'm gonna use crush we can use crush and noxious blast we probably won't get the kill unless we crit but we can start doing some good damage all right so even a crit here crit will be seven right or does it round up to eight let's use thrown dagger i think it actually goes to seven if i recall correctly but poison darts doesn't really do much for us either way it'll leave pistol shot good for next round and we didn't crit anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, so in this case, since we can't kill even with a crit, a crit would be... Well, we could kill with a crit, but a crit isn't li really likely. Blinding gas is actually really good value here. Stop the pillager crack shot from doing... Connecting with their most powerful attacks. And, of course, stop the fire mouth. Slow suffering begins. All right, pretty good turn. All right, so we can heal here, or we can push damage here. If we double attack, we can actually kill the pillager ha hatchet man. But I actually think a heal is stronger in this situation. Topping up our Dismas. This wound at least has been tended to. So this is an entry conundrum, because pistol shot is not guaranteed to kill. Pistol shot's only three to six. So I think I actually go for thrown dagger. This gives us an extra opportunity to try and crit or high roll and kill. This will give us two opportunities to kill the crack shot before they act. So I think I have to take this option. And we got lucky with the high roll for the kill. Now that problem is eliminated. This is unfortunate with the repost. So I think I actually just take aim. Wait for a better turn. So in this case, I crush and then pistol shot. And we have a good chance of killing the fire mouth before its next action. We have to roll a six or a seven though. And we did. So we will kill with pistol shot next turn guaranteed. Take another piece off the board. Now, what do we want to do here? I think we just force our way through this repost. We're fairly healthy. We also have uh, bandages if necessary. So I think I just force my way through this. And again, we force our way through. Need a high roll or a crit to kill. That doesn't give us affinity, so there's no neat reason to heal at this HP level. And we did not high roll, so he will be dead next turn. Alright, so we're going to get attacked here. 
So he's still guarded until next turn. So we could actually take the kill, even though the mongrel is already dead on his next turn. We might take the kill there. That way we can open next turn and kill the pillager hatchetman. Alternatively, we're about to get hit with the finishing move. We could use Defender to give ourselves a block token, mitigate some of this damage, and we gain an affinity. So I think this is the right move here. We take three less damage there. Now we could gain an additional affinity here. I think we actually do. The Hatchetman rolled early, unfortunately. So we could kill the Mongrel. And then if we crit 21% chance, we kill the Hatchetman before he acts. But I actually want to heal in this scenario. So I don't mind stalling here. And of course we get the free affinity boost. So I take my defender. Now this gives me affinity. That's actually pretty good. I think I actually take that. Of course we can still heal him as well. And we got crit. This gives us more chance. We could stress heal here, but I definitely take the heal here. Further boost him. This wound at least has and then we take the kill, to... right? I'm not using my Glimmer of Hopes yet because obviously our torch is so high. The most important thing with the torch is avoiding it hitting zero. Alright, I like corpse clear. That's pretty good for us. They didn't change my settings, did it? We're just facing a lot of lag because it's a tangle. And because of my GPU. But really, it's only the tangle that gives me lag. And it's only occasionally. Alright, that was only a road fight. Now we're in for our, our first resistance encounter, which will give us the tangle specific enemy pool. All right, we're going to do the fight. Two people want to do the fight. Like I said, maintaining neutrality is probably for the best. So I don't want to further hurt their relationship. Although that pushes us out, out of friendly range. So maybe I do take the Audrey. Maybe I preserve this friendly, which blocks us from getting negative relationships and take the le take the lower affinity here as long as we don't fall into negative relationship territory this is a good decision pretty difficult fight here We have the Knight, which is obviously a massive. He also does massive damage. So um, we probably want to kill the Foot Soldier. The Foot Soldier also does very respectable damage. So I think we go after the Foot Soldier first. We try and wear them down. And then we'll go after the Knight. So we go after Noxus Blast. Start getting this Blight going. I want to take aim. Mostly just to protect ourselves with a dodge token. Before we get hit with this guy. So we could do this. Go through his block. Or we could break his block and apply further blight damage. I actually like further blight damage. And then of course, then it'll be easier since uh, ignoring block, it doesn't remove his block. Which means then they have to deal with the block. So I actually like Poison Dart here. I like it less when I don't get anything. 
And see, there's our big damage. And our dodge didn't work, unfortunately. So defend is probably a good option here. Um, Barristan will put Foot Soldier on Death's Door with his guaranteed crit. So I get Defender up to gain Block Token. Obviously, I gain Affinity with this as well. And then we get a heal with uh, Paracelsus. Well done. Now he does have Death's Door, but it's only 5% and he has a dot. So we're just going to ignore it for now. We obviously get the heal to protect ourselves. And against the knight. So if this hits, at best, it's, well, unless we get a crit, which is very low crit. It's only six damage plus over three turns plus 10. Well, this can be much higher with crit chance. And it's immediate. It's pretty close. Well, the chance that the fact that he can resist the blight makes pick to the face better. We don't need more block tokens, so we just go after the crush. Keep dumping damage into him. Kill him as soon as possible. On guard is scary. Very scary. Early results are encouraging. So we are full HP. I want to break this block though. So I, I, I don't mind going into this uh, repost. We don't have any way to remove repost right now because we don't have Bellow unlocked yet. So we're going to have to break it with somebody. Might as well be someone full health. Next we will blind him because I do not want Paracelsus to get hit. And the blind did not work. All right, we got our first hopeful buff. That gives us a lot of resists. Not that useful in this fight. And, of course, I want to break the block here. Because um, we have block here. It's safer than here. And it means Dismas will get a free roll on this guy. Unfortunately, it's not enough. But this will push him to Death's Door at least. Now, the Knight is unique in that they get stronger on Death's Door. But I still think it's a good move to Death's Door right now. Although we could Pistol Shot and then kill next turn. So this is an interesting dilemma. He gets stronger on Death's Door. But it'll be easier to kill him once he's on Death's Door this turn. As opposed to... Hitting him with a uh, pistol shot and then having to put him on death's door next turn. And we have a dodge token and a block token and he can only attack the front ranks. So I feel kind of safe putting him on death's door. As you can see, plus 30% damage. Of course, we want to get a heal in. This is very scary. Because we're very low HP here, and I want to get a heal. But he has a high death door resist. So I think I just go for the kill. I want to get that heal in, but it's very dangerous. A bit too dangerous for me. In crisis, no gain is in very good rewards. Very good. The loathing abates. Put the glimmer on you, I guess. Well, you don't have anything. Give you disease resist and debuff resist. Alright. Now, of course, we have a free road. Which should help us recover our HP a bit. On our way to another assistant encounter.
very slow healing. We're about to hit a very rough, rough patch, though. Based Two road Bolivia, fights and a cultist fight. These folk have kept their honor. Or we can get have food, you. which I don't care about. This gives us max. These both give us max relationships. I think we choose Grave Robber here. This is obviously a terrible choice. This one only gets one positive. Dismas doesn't need help, and of course, Paracelsus and Audrey are the ones that need huge help. And this also confirms these friendly relationships. There's another hero go goal complete, more candles. So now we have a friendly. We're still in neutral here. We're almost in very friendly there. So we're starting to see some positive affinity gains. Now, obviously, for our goal, we have to go to the hoarder. Don't have a lot of loot to spend at this hoarder. The end of things. They waited for death. And still they wait. We don't have very many baubles. I don't think we have enough baubles to buy anything here. All right, here's our gaunt fight, which we've talked about earlier. I'm going to open up take aim. It's a very strong opening. We're going to try and kill one target, at least. Now, if we crit, we kill, obviously. Otherwise, it's just good damage. Now, we have to both get the blight. And get the 50-50 roll, 50-50 uh, top roll to kill here. Bravo. And we luckily got the crit, so he is dead. So Wicked Slice will automatically kill one enemy. But there's no affinity here. So we just crush one of them. So what's the turn order? Filthy Morsel moves them up one space. So let's look at the turn order. This guy will move before the end guy. So if we use uh, Rampart to push him back. If we use Rampart to push this enemy back one, they will move back and then they will Filthy Morsel and then this hero will Filthy Morsel. That means there will be no heroes getting chopped this turn, which means no stress. So Rampart is the correct play. Oh, but he will be dazed. I forgot about the daze. That was my mistake. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's still the right decision. So we eat one chomp. Resisted stress, thankfully. He's now in heal range, which is good. All right, so we definitely take out the chopper. We get the free kill there. We try and take a thrown dagger kill. I don't know if this is high. With the blight resist, I think thrown dagger is a higher chance to kill. And we take a heal opportunity when we have it. Very important to take heals when you can get them. And we can get a guaranteed kill here. I'm very happy with that. All right, a crit is unfortunate. Because that's stress. No affinity to be boosted. So we just go for the further kill. I think we try and blind here. So we don't take any more hits. We still take the hit. So do we want to stall and heal? He has only one speed. We have five speed here. So I'm just going to hit the corpse. 
that still gives me a chance at healing stress. Uh, so we're going to eat. We have to eat a chomp if we want to heal here. So I don't want to eat a chomp. So we kill. Another impediment cleared with impunity. An unexpected find. That's actually pretty good. Move resist. Who do we want to get healed more? But also doesn't mind moving. You're already steady. Although we don't actually like you moving. Maybe this goes on Paracelsus. I'm not that concerned about Paracelsus getting moved. Because we still have incision and stuff. incoherently but his prices remain all right we have fixed. playing cards playing cards are very good and pipe weed is very good this is guaranteed affinity here those are guaranteed purchases I'm thinking very closely about we're about to head into the cultist fight which has heavy heavy bleed damage so I think I'm going to Empty my, empty my treasure chest, pick up the bandages. I'm actually quite worried about this fight. Put it on Audrey. Put that on you for now. There's another hero goal complete. We have two fights, so this is going to be a very brutal road. This is a very important encounter. The lost souls of a dying world. We got to get through this fight with little to no damage, which will be difficult with Big Daddy here. All right, I want to kill the Widow, but I also want to kill Frontline. I think I kill the Lost Soul first and blind the back row with Paracelsus. We use Blinding Gas backline that stops them. Between Pick to the Face and Wicked Slice, we should be able to kill um, the Lost Soul before it can chomp. So we Blinding Gas. No Blight there, unfortunately. Not a guaranteed kill, but a very like high likelihood of a kill. Good. There's our stress. Now I can actually self heal here and he's blinded. So I don't mind, but the combo token can be used more productively with grave robber, I believe. So I actually defend, he can only target the front two ranks. So I defend my high women. This guy has a very strong attack. That I do not want to take with a Vaughn token. See, that would have done way more than 14 with the Vaughn token. That would have been almost killed him. Actually, I think I go for the kill back line now. Alright, 19% chance to crit. I think it's a higher likelihood we kill with a Blight. All right, we kill in two turns. That's, I guess, acceptable. We're going to need a lot more stress, though. So I guess I just eat this. This is a guaranteed blight. That's an okay usage of a combo token, I guess. I don't really have anything else to do. Well, I could heal. Yeah, let's heal. And we'll let uh, the crush take the combo token. A calculated generosity. But a welcome one, nonetheless. We don't have upgraded ramparts, so that doesn't do anything. And he wasted a turn protecting the child, who is already dead. Bly resist is low, so I think I just do this to break his block. And we crush because it's the highest damage available. Just need to dump as much damage as possible. Although blind is actually good here. 
Yeah, I prefer blind. And I also want some crits, so we're going to go ahead and take aim. Take a turn to take aim. We're actually cutting it close on whether we're going to kill. This crit will help. Got a stress heal off that as well. We pick to the face. And if we high roll on this Noxious Blast, then we will secure the kill. Or secure the death's door. So we definitely want to crush here. This will force him to death's door. And then we have a 75% chance of this Blight killing him. All right, very well done fight. This means we're going to go basically full health into the cultists, which are the scariest encounter so far. Creature Den was pretty scary. And of course, we're maintaining our stress very well, which means we're getting more affinity. Right, they all want to fight. Now, obviously, we choose either Paracelses. And by the way, you can either right-click or hit R to bring this up in this menu. Bring up the relationship menu. So we either do Paracelses or uh, Audrey because they need to boost their relationship. Now, this gives us a chance of getting Max Affinity. Max Affinity is a huge boost. I believe Max Affinity has 90% chance of a positive relationship forming. If we can get ourselves to 20. Force ourselves to 20. So I actually... And otherwise very friendly is I think 67% or 60%. Something like that. So I actually like Audrey here. They all have the same fight options. Try and push Max Affinity here. Although, since we have Man at Arms, it wasn't quite necessary. Right, this is a very scary fight. Double Herald is horrific. Terrifying. I think we try and rush. So we use this to crit. Instead of the slower Blight. Just a chance at a crit. We definitely blinding gas here. Like I said, these guys can do first trumpet. Which is devastating for the back line. Devastating damage. These guys are obviously very dangerous too, but they're higher HP, they have block, or they have dodge. These enemies are very hard to kill early, so we take the kills we can get. Double blind, very good. All right, we took one hit. And we're going to double hit here to guarantee the kill. Actually, it's not a guarantee. We take aim to guarantee the kill. Next turn, we'll be first to act with the speed token. So it's fine. Yeah, we take the guarantee. And then we take... We could heal here. It's a bit early for a heal, though. We're going to be eating a lot of bleed damage from these guys. So do we want the crit? Or do we want to start doing dart damage? Excellent work. Dart damage seems better in this scenario. So ounce is actually a strong choice here. Boost our dot damage. We're not... We're, we could roll... Actually, all right, so here's my line of thinking on why I'm not going to use Ounce here. I am going to use Medicinal Herbs, however, on myself. That's too much dot damage. I don't want to take eight damage. We utilize that. I want to use Noxious Blast here. This will strip the dodge token. Herald is next to act. And then Barristan can use Rampart to push the Evangelist back. The Evangelist in the back row can only use Rush Judgment, a much weaker attack. 
And we got lucky with the hit anyways. Clarion call is fine. It's only two stress. Not too concerned about that. Now we can Rampart. 60% uh, chance we get this move, so it's not guaranteed. All right, we got lucky. All right, now we're eating some bleed damage. Now is the time to heal. All right, Highwayman kills here. All right, with this turn order, with Highwayman going last, apparently, we need to get this heal off. We need to remove this bleed. And then we're going to go ahead and pick the face here. If we can get through the dodge, one, and crit, two, we will push the evangelist to death's door. It's not likely, but either way, it's the correct choice to go for the, obviously, go for the weaker target. Uh, we can't kill backline, but Highwayman is guaranteed to kill backline. Haste and carelessness. All marks of the unprepared. <laughs> Ooh, that's bad. We're blinded now, so it's only a 50-50 to kill. Very bad. That's horrific. Alright, that's... We're in really bad shape now. We have to take the heal up front. Yeah, we're in very bad shape because of that miss. And now they're communing, so they have to become the priority target. I think I have to crush here to try and get, try and remove this dodge so we can kill. I think I got to confirm this kill. I think I have to. We're going to need one more Herald. That's really bad. I got a self heal here. Which means we have to use Audrey. Uh, it's not time to heal yet. We have. We don't want to eat this crit. We got to push him to death's door. 95% chance they die. Like I said, cultist fights are very hard. Very difficult. You got to really think. Clarion call is amazing. All right, I'm going to clear these corpses so I can finally kill the Herald. I'm sick of the Herald. All right, now we can self buff. The question is, do we want to... That hurts their relationships for some reason. So I don't need that. I'm just gonna... Ooh, we're, we don't have... We can't absinthe yet. That's very scary. But... We cannot be targeted by the Evangelist in the back row. So we just do damage. We just keep doing damage. We're going to heal this. It's our last heal, unfortunately. Of course, she can absinthe, so... So, in this case, we're using Rampart to daze to force the Evangelist to act last so we can kill next round. And we got him to death's door. That was quite lucky. We get a self-heal. And... No more messing around. We just take the kill. And we successfully survived a cultist fight. Hopefully we get rewards. Commensurate with this experience. Pretty good rewards. Not the rewards we wanted, of course. We wanted one of the cultist trinkets. Did we get a mastery? I did not notice. We don't have any mastery except for this. So we take the question mark. Hoping for a hero shrine. 
Who wants blight resist? Doesn't really matter here. All right, you need a new item. Probably noisemaker for Barristan. Bear trap could be good too. Bear trap is actually not bad against the cultists. All right, we have to survive one more easy it's fight. We're definitely taking question mark. At least it should be. Academic cash is very good too. That's relics. And of course, we're out of relics currently. All right, we need to survive this fight in good shape so we can take on another cultist. So we immediately take action against one of these opponents. So I'm going to pick to the face here and hope we can kill with Noxious Blast, which we have a high likelihood to. That can get us two kills on turn one. 50-50 here. The oh, plus the uh, Blight. All right, so we got two kills round one. Quite good. No chomps this round at least. Unfortunate dodge plus miss. Steady subtraction, an invariable result. All right, again, we kill the chomper before he has time to act. But we're also going to heal here. We definitely need this heal. And of course, Wicked Slice will kill. Guaranteed. And I actually think I use this now. It was useful in the last cultist fight, but I don't think it'll be that useful in the next fight. So we Rampart instead of Crush. Although, this is a stress heal. Widow only has two speed, so I think I Crush instead for the stress heal on Paracelses. Especially since they have Horror. And now we're hoping for an immediate kill here. So we don't have to roll on this horror twice. All right, perfect fight. It's very important to get these fights down. These early fights the take gone. come away with no damage. Pipeweed is an amazing pickup. It's very important. So you can do the difficult fights. Like I said, we're about to head into the cultist fight. This is the first major gatekeeper of um, the candles. If you're a newer player and you're really getting beat up by this game, I recommend actually you end at the first in just so you can get your unlocks. I'm going to take all and then sort the inventory later. You can carry no more. So everyone's going to have one of these basically. I'm not going to use slime mold. I'm just not going to do it. We have a lot of burn salves. I think I'll pick up bear trap for this fight. The burn salves could be useful later. All right, so we should be get some healing, be near max HP with Barristan. I'm just not an advocate of slime mold. I hate random diseases. I think getting random diseases or quirks is worse than getting uh, 10 and plus 10 percent max HP. All right, this is our first altar experience. Flesh weaving is bad start. They will heal, so the altar has to go first. They just do too much healing, too much block generation. I'm going to Noisemaker here. Force a Taunt here. And I'm going to Ounce. We don't have a lot. 
blinding doesn't do much here. Confers advantage. Same with I'm going to take aim. Because pushing into this block with highwaymen doesn't make sense. So we start stripping block here. And like I said, we got to go full on against the altar. The altar has to go first. Blight's a decent way to counteract the uh, healing. Either way, we missed, so it doesn't matter. Nice bleed resist, courtesy of uh, Ounce of Prevention. So like I said, we definitely go here. We're going to target. We're going to target the uh, altar till it dies. Now, in this case, I like throwing dagger. Damn, we just couldn't do it. Not great rolls so far. Bad miss on the dodge. Blinding gas doesn't do anything because the altar doesn't attack us. So we just roll into uh, one of these. All right, in this scenario, Rampart is actually best. Because we can't kill with Crush here. There's no way of killing. So we just move you out of position and hope the Highwayman gets a good speed roll. Force you into the back rank. So you can only do Rush Judgment instead of your uh, tougher abilities. Alright, maybe we can finally get the kill this round. Wow. See, flesh weaving is just brutal. We can't afford to have flesh weaving up and running. Excellent work. All right, flashing daggers is not guarantee a kill, correct? I'm just gonna confirm. Yeah, it does not guarantee a kill. This is the only way to guarantee a kill. No affinity, so I think it's a bit early to um, get a heal in. And we, we can heal here. That's actually a fine heal. Then we'll heal here next round. Could defend. I think we just crush. Start removing tokens. All right, that's very scary. Maybe should have defended. That's all right. We'll get the heal in this round. Empowered, emboldened. I think. I think we'll target here. I can't decide which target to make. Right, I'm going to take aim to get a dodge up. We're very high high likelihood to die. All right, so I want to bear trap and then... No. We're just going to try and push. Push them back. Less actions. This is unfortunate, though, with the block token. I think I actually just go for the backline kill. We lock them in place in the back and give them a bleed. And with Crush, they are now dead. So we succeeded in killing one Evangelist. Getting real unlucky with the hits here through the dodge. We have to take the last heal here, of course. And then we have to take this crit chance, this chance of crit. All right, still in a scary position. 
The Cherub is annoying, of course, but they aren't the... The Evangelist just does so much damage between the bleed, between the crits, between the AoE, that you just have to kill the Evangelist first. So we're going to continue to focus down the Evangelist. And we definitely use bandages here. And we put the Evangelist on Death's Door where they'll have a 95% chance of dying. Alright, now the fight is good. The Cherub cannot kill us. I think we try and farm affinity if we can in this position. I'm not going to go like all out farming affinity. But I'm going to go here to try and stress heal. And now we'll just kill. All right, well, we survived. That's one area done. Eager to ply his trade. We got a dark impulse. Let's take these and decide later. All right, we have space for combat items. You can take a burn salve, I guess. You can receive medicinal herbs. Now let's move on to here. I like all these items. These are really good, including the stitching kit. Especially for Barristan. I don't like losing max HP for speed. So I get rid of that. Does anyone have naturally high burn resist? No. So I guess I put burn on you. Just to have it. Now this is a very good item. But remember... We have avoided the field hospital, which means we will receive a griddle, which will provide our food. And since we're on a fresh profile, we only have one slot for stagecoach equipment. So, this wind chime, it's not going to happen. I always like ha having 19 of 20. So I can run over items or whiff. So I can run over items and receive them in my inventory in case we get lucky. All right, that is region one. Thank you all for watching this tutorial Tuesday. Um, come back next Tuesday for the next part in the series where we will do the oh, next region. Guard. And let me know if you have uh, any suggestions for anything more I should do for this series? Anything you think I need to explain more or uh, suggestions for future runs? And of course, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe. I post new content every day.